to Pickleball Therapy, the podcast dedicated to your pickleball improvement. Hope you're having a nice week. In this week's podcast, we're going to be talking about two subjects that I think you'll find interesting. First, we're going to talk about the soft game. We're going to dive into the soft game and talk about how the soft game can really help improve your game, regardless of where you are along the path. Adding or mastering or improving the soft game can definitely improve your pickleball game. We'll talk about that. And then we're going to talk about, in the riff, we're going to talk about paddle selection and paddle weight. Uh, we took a quick little survey on Facebook in the Pickleball Forum, which is the largest community in in the world on pickleball. Uh, so if you're not part of the Pickleball Forum, you're welcome to go in there if you're a Facebook user and check them out. And uh, we went in there and did a poll on uh, paddle weight and what players thought about paddle weight. I think you'll find the results interesting, but we're also going to talk, talk to you about paddle weight and explain how to think about paddle weight when you're selecting a paddle. So if you're into those topics and you're into pickleball improvement, stay tuned for the podcast. As a pickleball player, you are no doubt working on your game, but are you also working on your vision? Doesn't it make sense that better vision will lead to better pickleball? Not to mention better night driving. CJ and I rely on the experts at Visual Edge to help us track those balls so we don't ever miss a shot. If you're ready to take your vision and perhaps your game to the next level, join us inside Visual Edge. I'll link to it below. We'll see you inside. All right, what are we talking about when we talk about the soft game? Let's get into that subject. Uh, you know, it's a pickleball is an evolving sport. It's a sport that, uh, as you know, as new players come in, uh, particularly tennis players, I think, as tennis and racquetball players, as those kind of players come into the game, they come to the game. They come to pickleball with a uh, basically, you know, they've been playing tennis or racquetball. Uh, and so they have that history, right? They have that, that, that way of playing a sport. And so they come into pickleball and oftentimes you'll see tennis players bang from the baseline, right? They'll stand at the baseline and hit balls, you know, not necessarily super hard, but you know, what we call banging is anything that's not a soft shot, right? So you know, they'll bang balls from the baseline and sometimes out from the front too, but basically they'll just bang balls. And so that, that creates sort of the banger or the hard way of playing the game. And then there's the soft way of playing the game, which you might consider the opposite, I guess. Uh, and the soft way of playing the game would be a more resetting, dinking, uh, and a reset is any time that you're neutralizing pace. So if someone hits the ball hard at you and you're countering it with a soft shot or with, with you know reducing the pace of the ball, that would be entering into the soft game. Uh, and that would be, that, that's part of the soft game. So the... The the question then is, you know, what about adding a soft game to your game? Is there a benefit to adding a soft game to your game? And we're going to suggest to you that it is. And what's interesting, there's some, there's an interesting sort of dynamic in pickleball. In other activities, other sports, as the game advances, the game speeds up. The game gets faster. So if you look at, like, you know, a 3.5 tennis player and a pro tennis player, the speed of the ball that the pro tennis player is hitting on average is going to be usually way higher than the 3.0 or 3.5 or even 4.0 or 4.5 tennis player, right? So it's just going to be the pro player is going to hit much harder. Uh, you know, and you look at other, you know, even, you know, baseball, the pitchers pitch faster. I mean, everything gets faster as the game gets more advanced, right? As the, as the, it's more professional or professional compared to amateur, I should say. Pickleball is different. What happens there is you see in the rec games, you see a lot of uh, hard balls being hit, a lot of just fast shots and things like that. And then you get to the pro level and all of a sudden the game slows down, right? You watch the pros play and the pros players, the pro players are sitting out there dinking, moving the ball around, hitting these loopy, you know, uh, kind of third shots that a lot of rec players would look at and go, I'm not hitting that kind of shot. That's a high loopy ball. I'm going to get killed. But the pro player knows that that's something that is is more beneficial to the to their game. In other words, it's going to be more successful over time than just banging all the balls. So that's just an interesting dynamic of pickleball. But what what's important about that, right? Uh, about understanding that or recognizing that, is that you can add the soft game to your game. In other words, the soft game is a game that is available to everybody. And so that's what I'm saying. It's also backwards. Like in tennis, you know. Every tennis player dreams of a you know 100 mile an hour serve, 120 mile an hour serve, right? I mean that's just like wow, if I could do that, really hard to do, really hard to master, really hard to um, really hard to 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 
develop that type of shot. In pickleball, the shots that you want to hit, the shots that you want to uh, deploy, the soft game, are available to everybody. Uh, so they're actually kind of not the lowest common denominator because it takes some work, but they're shots that there's no reason why if you spend some time working on them, you can't add soft game to your game. So regardless of your background, regardless of what brought you to pickleball or what you did before pickleball, you can add the soft game to your game. If you're going to add the soft game, let me give you a couple of tips. One, you need to add intentionality to your game. It's something we talk about all the time because it applies to intentionality is one of those overriding principles that applies to everything. And the intentionality you're trying to add to your game when you're adding the soft game is you need to work on slowing everything down. You need to be out there looking to slow the game down. That'll show you how to play the soft game. You need to have a willingness to reset a ball um, as necessary. So in other words, you you know, as you're being attacked, you need to be able to be, have an understanding of intentionality, but also a willingness to just say, okay, I'm not going to engage in a firefight here. I'm going to slow things down using a reset shot. Importantly, though, you still need to allow out balls to pass. So we're not telling you to reset shots that are going out, right, or potentially going out because that's a recipe for disaster. You need to start adding some, sorry, start adding some patience into when you play. Uh, so basically, you know, wait until the opportunity presents itself. You know, work the work the rally, right? Work it, and then wait until an, a, a nice opportunity presents itself. You need to work on a compact swing. If your swing is too long, uh, that is something that you need to work on. If you need help on that type of stuff, highly recommend you check us out at We Are Pickleball, uh, our success path at We Are Pickleball. That is something that we focus on in the success path because without a compact swing, a lot of the other things are simply not possible. And again, you need to have an awareness of outballs. Outballs is an important part of playing a soft game because if you're playing a soft game against someone who does not care to participate with you in a soft game, uh, then you're going to be under attack a lot and you need to be able to, you need to be, you need to understand to be willing to let balls go, uh, some of which will land out and some which will not, but you need to understand that part of it. So, those are skills that uh, you know require some work, and you'll need to to, to apply yourself to them. But basically, it, uh, you know, the soft game can be added to your game if you understand those things. Let's talk about some of the benefits of the of the soft game. One is that, in addition to being available to, to all players, it allows you to even the odds, uh, regardless of your strength, size, things like that. You can play with pretty much anybody as long as you have a good soft game, as long as you're able to slow things down. There's really nobody who can kind of blow you off the court because you're able to keep the pace the way you want to the way you want to play it. So evening the odds is important. You can become also the what we call the frustrator in chief, right? That's a term that we use. And you know, if you think about pickleball's defining rule, the, the rule that makes our game what it is, it's the non volley it's the no volley zone rule, right? The kitchen. Uh, the kitchen is what defines our game. Otherwise, we're just playing mini tennis. So. Once you understand the importance of that area of the of the court and use it to your advantage, which is which is how the soft game is is able to happen in any event, right? I mean, those the soft game is possible because of the kitchen or the non volley zone, the NVZ. Then you can basically use it to reset rallies over and over again. And think about it when you've played somebody who uh, just resets that ball over and over and over again after you attack them. How frustrating is that, right? Well, why not make that yourself? You become the frustrator in chief on the court. You become the one that people say, my Lord, I have to hit the ball 17 times to win a point against against this player. Uh, so using the soft game is how you how you can do that. The other thing about the soft game that's interesting is that, you know, there's all these benefits in play. In other words, you'll play longer rallies. You'll be able to battle anybody, even the odds. All of those things, when you look at all of those things, what they what you end up with is you end up with increased confidence okay you end up with you step out on the court and you say you know what i don't care who's opposite me i don't care who who they who they who they throw at me right uh, across the net i know how to throw things i know how to slow things down i know how to play the game at the pace that i want to play it and having that knowledge knowing that you're able to do that is just an amazing confidence booster when you're out there playing, you just step out on the court and you say, you know what, bring it. I got this. And so highly recommend if you, if you haven't worked on the soft game before, highly recommend you work on the soft game. If you're not sure how to do it, you know, we have the, we are pickleball camps where we, where we work on all aspects of the game. Right. But a lot of our focus is on, on slowing things down, on getting things within the pace that we want to have during a game. 
Uh, you can also join us at We Are Pickleball, our success path, uh, and uh, you know we'll basically show you how to slow things down and play the game under control, and then you'll have more confidence out there and hopefully have more fun. All right, so that's the those are the tips on the soft game and the benefits of it. Uh, in the riff, we're going to be talking about paddle weight and how to understand paddle weight when you select your next paddle. Stay tuned for the riff. Are you planning on playing pickleball on an indoor surface, meaning a polished concrete or wood surface like in a gym? If you are, consider adding a pair of indoor pickleball shoes to your bag. There is a big difference between outdoor shoes made for a tennis court and indoor shoes made for a gym type surface. You can check out Tyrol's indoor shoes designed specifically for pickleball. It's a shoe that CJ and I both wear. I'll link to it below. All right, we're going to talk about paddle weight, and we're going to be talking about that. Before we do, I did want to let you all know that our 2022 We Are Pickleball camp schedule is posted. It's up on uh, wearepickleball.com forward slash camps. You can find our camp schedule, and we are going, we're taking a tour. The first half of the year is already up. Second half of the year will be up soon. But check it out and uh, join us for one of our camps. They're really small camps, only 16 players per session. So it's 16 players. It is me and it is CJ Johnson, my partner at We Are Pickleball, who you may know of also from Better Pickleball. Uh, that is who's going to be on the courts. And so it's a lot of fun. Uh, and uh, if you want to really learn the game and get immersed in it, highly recommend one of our camps. Check them out. Anyway, let's talk about paddle weight. So we're curious about um, how players were looking at paddle weight decisions. So we threw up a quick poll in the uh, Pickleball Forum. And again, if you're not a part of the Pickleball Forum on Facebook, if you're in Facebook and you like Pickleball, highly recommend you check it out. It's the largest uh, community out there. It's super, uh, there's a lot of nice conversations in there, not a lot of ads and things like that. Actually, I don't know if there's any that that are in the system, in the forum, but just really good, uh, really good uh, uh, format for conversations about Pickleball. If you have questions and things like that, uh, CJ and I uh, sometimes go in there and, and uh, or not sometimes, we go in there and we... Uh, basically answer some questions and post some post some questions like these. So basically the paddle weight question was, do you, when you're selecting a paddle, do you look for a heavy paddle, a light paddle, uh, is the, a balanced paddle, or uh, weight doesn't matter to me? And so the, the interesting thing was the responses were pretty consistent. Uh, there were uh, 75 heavier, 73 lighter, 23 balanced, and then like four or five that said uh, doesn't matter to me. And so wanted to talk a little bit about paddle weight because it's one of those areas that I think is is um, a little bit um, confusing, I want to say. Not confusing, but I, I think there's there's a need for more information on paddle weight. What happens is you get players who basically look for paddles that are like, some players say, well, I want an 8.3 ounce paddle or 8.6 ounce paddle. And some players say, well, I want a 7.4 ounce paddle. And there's nothing inherently wrong with those thoughts, right? Those, those uh, uh, ideas of paddles. But... I can give you a 7.4 ounce paddle that's actually heavier or feels heavier when, you, when you're playing, which is what's important, than the 8.6 ounce paddle. And the way I do that is I take the weight of the, the weight within the paddle and I distribute it to where it's more towards the top than towards the bottom. So think about it this way. Let's take two paddles that are identical. Take two 8 ounce paddles. But in one paddle, I take 7 ounces, okay, 7 of the 8 ounces, and I put all that weight in just in the grip, in the part that you're holding in your hand. And then I take the other ounce and I, I spread it out among the, the around the rest of the paddle. So the whole paddle, uh, the, the part that the hitting face of it is one ounce and the grip is seven ounces. Then I take the other paddle and I put one ounce in the grip, but I put seven ounces in the in the hitting part of the paddle. Now, eight ounces in eight ounces is half a pound, right? So if I gave you half a pound and put it into your hand, that wouldn't feel too heavy, I don't think. For most of us, it wouldn't feel too heavy. It's like picking up, you know, a can of corn or something. So it's not gonna, it's not gonna feel that heavy. Now, if I took that weight though, and I and I put it, you know, whatever, twelve inches, fourteen inches away from your hand, and told you to hold on to it, that's gonna feel heavy. So if you look at the two paddles, the one that has seven ounces in the grip and one ounce on the face is gonna feel vastly different than the one that has one ounce in the grip and seven ounces in the in the top of it, right? And so that's that's what we call what's called swing weight, or or actually that's called that's called the paddle balance or the the weight balance of the paddle. And so the more weight that's towards the top of the paddle, the heavier the paddle will feel, and that then translates into a concept called swing weight. And swing weight is is how much how does it how much does the paddle weigh as you swing it through the air? And if you think about it, right, that's what matters. 
What matters isn't like how much does the paddle weigh when it's sitting in your in your backpack, right? Or in your in your in your sports bag. Doesn't matter. I mean, it's relevant, but it, it's not the end thing that you need to be concerned about. What matters is how do, how heavy is this paddle when I swing it? Because if you're out there playing for three hours, you're swinging the paddle, you know, a couple hundred times, right? Maybe more. But basically, you're swinging the paddle over and over again. That's what causes, you know, that's what wears down your arm, right? That's what causes the your hand, your wrist, your forearm. And those are small muscles on the forearm. That's what causes your body to tire. That's what can cause injury. That's what can cause delays in moving the paddle around. Because if the paddle feels like, you know, if it feels like you're dragging it through water is how we think about it. If, you, if it feels like you're dragging it through water, it's going to take forever to get from your backhand to your forehand or your forehand to your backhand. Uh, particularly when you're up at the NBZ. So understanding that what, what we recommend is when you're thinking about a paddle, when you're, when you're, when you're holding on to paddles and moving them around is, is look at them in terms of their swing weight. And the way you do that just informally is take the paddle that you're used to, hold it on in front of yourself loosely, and then just kind of swing it from left to right. So just kind of take your paddle, swing it left to right, and then take another paddle and do the same thing. Just take it left to right. And then what you want to do is say, okay, which one felt more like I was dragging, which one had more resistance, which one felt more like I was dragging it through water and which one felt like less. The one that feels like it's dragging through water more, like it has more resistance, has higher swing weight. And the one that feels less has lower swing weight. So think about that next time you're looking at a paddle, consider not just total gross weight of the paddle, you know, 7.4 or 8.1 or whatever, consider the swing weight of the paddle. Uh, unfortunately, right now, paddle manufacturers are not yet providing that kind of information. In tennis, they use a concept called headlight, and they give you the headlight points. Hopeful that eventually paddle manufacturers will start providing that information, because then you can at least know, okay, I'm buying an 8-ounce paddle that is, say, 6 points headlight versus an 8-ounce paddle that is 4 points headlight. And you can make a decision whether you want the lighter paddle, the head lighter paddle, or the head heavier paddle uh, in, that, in that comparison. So anyway, swing weight, important when you're selecting a paddle. Hope you enjoyed this week's podcast. We are off next week. Next week is, uh, I think it's a holiday week. That's what Jill told me. We got a holiday in there somewhere. So we are going to take next week off. We'll be back uh, the week after. We'll hit you with a uh, end of year kind of a thing. New year, end of year sort of podcast. So uh, make sure you come back for that. If you enjoyed the podcast, please rate and review it. It really helps other players find this podcast. If you find it helpful, they'll probably will too. And remember, share it with your friends. Because if you like the podcast, they probably will too. Have a happy holiday season and we will see you in a couple of weeks. Be well out there.